Hello everyone, you're watching the Gen X Farmer. If you're even remotely interested in witnessing a middle-aged farmer sweat profusely trying to keep up with these younger age farmers, stay tuned. This is probably the channel for you. And if it is your thing, please subscribe to our channel, give our videos a thumbs up, and share our content. It really helps us promote our page to boost our word on food production. Let's keep an eye on old Rex here. He sure likes to hunt mice. Ready, boy? You ready? Mark, get set, go! Anything? Anything? No, don't eat the grain. Hunt them out. Well, that was boring. Look at that determination. You can see here, our butcher calves have what we call a few fines in the bottom of the uh, feed bunk here. We're going to try to scoop them back up, blend them back in with some good grain so we don't waste it. didn't take the time to scoop them all out got it relatively clean we put it in a five gallon bucket here and as you can see we got it about two-thirds full we'll just sprinkle them over the top of some good grain and see if we can trick them and get them to eat it I want to point something out here real quick if you can notice this creek is no longer dry I think in a couple of my previous videos uh, pointed out we were blessed with some much needed rain well, besides aiding our crops, what this also does is it replenishes our cricks. Uh, give the livestock more opportunities to drink, or not opportunities, give some more places to drink. Uh, we do have supplemental water in this particular pasture. It comes from a well, we have to pump it. But it's just an additional chore, uh, an additional expense of pumping water. Uh, we are very fortunate to have this creek flowing here. As you can tell, it's relatively crystal clear. And there's that wild and crazy mama. She just does not like me. Hey, hey, get out of there. We ain't photobobbing. Get out of there, I-35. This isn't an interstate. Yeah, yeah. See if we can catch this little guy headbutting his mama. There's a good one. Well, here we are. We just got going drilling this morning. Uh, we're not actually drilling winter wheat right now. We're drilling what, we're, what we call triticale. It's just something we can use for our livestock. Uh, it grows about like wheat. It's considered a cereal crop. It's actually a cross between wheat and I believe rye. Uh, it's a little more tonnage. We can graze it. Spring rolls around, we can probably even bring them into the swather and a baler if we have anything left over where we can bail it. But anyway, uh, I got 40 acre field here to go. Seems things seem to be working real well, and uh, hopefully we can get her finished out with no trouble.
Hey Cole, look. Another sound guard cap, John Deere. Could it be one just such as you have? I'll tell you what, stay tuned to the end of this video and I'll reveal the secret. Root beer. No caffeine, no sugar. But it sure has a pick me up. I recommend it. Good stuff. In the video I briefly shows you some footage of us planting some triticale here a few days ago uh, I believe we put that in the ground on Sunday and today is Thursday uh, got a call this afternoon told me to go scout my fields uh, we have a local infestation of what we call cutworms army cutworms uh, they are the insect that eventually turns in to what we all know as moths or millers uh, Particularly concerning to me because they can move in and completely destroy a crop You know when that seed starts to germinate and it's just a very small seedling You know once that plant gets eaten once that seedling gets eaten by these uh, army cutworms It's gone. It won't come back. You know and me as a producer We've already got you know thousands of dollars invested into this these acres even though that crop is just still under the surface, you know, we've got our time, we've got our diesel fuel, we've got our wear and tear and our equipment, uh, not to mention, uh, you know, fertilizer we have, you know, thousands of dollars. And then on the other end of it, you know, we rely on those, that production, that tonnage, you know, for feed for our livestock. So it's real concerning, real alarming. Uh, we're going to go out and scout some acres now. I don't exactly know what the threshold is if we do have an infestation. Uh, I'll try to put a link down in the description. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe describe what type of a bug this is and what type of damage they can do. But we're going to go scout some acres and to see if we're uh, see if we need to need to move in and spray some. I'll try to talk here out here scouting some fields. We do have emergence on this first field. Uh, right there's a plant sticking out of the ground. Oh, probably a couple inches. Could probably pop through the surface either late yesterday evening or uh, maybe even today. If you follow that same row, you can see we have we have multiple germination. Uh, got a couple of them here. I'll try to point them out. Just just barely popping through the surface. Uh, don't see any don't see any cutworms yet. Uh, they tell me if, if I did have an infestation, the ground would literally be crawling. Uh, don't see that yet. So I guess at this point, that's good news. And uh, we'll just continue to uh, keep our eye on it, scout these fields and check them daily. But right now I'm pleased with the emergence. And uh, hopefully here in a couple, three days, uh, this field will slowly be turning green. And there it is. 4630. It's not as new as Cole the Corn Stars, and it's probably got a few more hours, but I'm here to tell you, she's a good one. Thank you for watching. This brings us to my least favorite part of the video, the end.